Hey guys, it's Jen. Welcome back to another weekend prep video. So it is a cold, blustery fall Saturday and I thought I would take you with me this weekend as I get stuff done for the week ahead. Got a cold brew coffee in hand. It's actually uh, late afternoon on Saturday. I spent the day kind of just hanging out, going through emails. I also made my Thanksgiving meal plan and I need to make my shopping list for that. And now I am doing some cooking for uh, Lasagna Love, which is an organization I volunteer for. I'll link them down below if you either need a home-cooked meal or want to provide a home-cooked meal for someone. I know I talk about them all the time on my channel, but sometimes there are new people. <laughs> so check them out down below. I love volunteering for them because I love cooking for people. And if I can give someone a nice warm meal when they need it, then I feel like that is one of the ways that I can <laughs> give back to my community. So I'm gonna show you guys how I'm putting together the lasagnas that I'm making today. We're gonna go deliver those. I gotta make dinner tonight. And then I have a bunch of other stuff I wanna get done this weekend. I really need to work on cleaning my office. I've got a bunch of clothes that um, Kira has gone through, that I've gone through, that we need to donate to Goodwill. I wanna organize my earrings. Lots of stuff to get done this weekend, so let's go. I wanna take a quick break and thank Marlo for sponsoring this week's weekend prep video. Marlo is a pillow brand that is designed to give you a better sleep, and maybe your dog too, if your dog likes to sleep in bed with you. So this is seriously the best pillow that I've ever tried. I have been having neck pain for a while and have struggled with finding a pillow that's firm enough to relieve it, and you guys, this is definitely it. Marlowe pillows actually have extra chill, cooling infused foam, so you won't get hot and sweaty when you sleep. And the coolest thing about them is that they have an easily adjustable zipper detail, so you can zip both sides for a firmer pillow or unzip for added plushness, or you can even leave one side unzipped and zip the other side for kind of a middle of the road experience. Other adjustable pillows come with filling to take in and out of the pillow, while Marlo offers no mess adjustability through its zipper feature. I seriously cannot recommend these pillows enough. They are so cool and so comfortable to sleep on. And guess what? Marlo is having its Black Friday sale, so you are gonna save even more. You can save up to 40%. It's their biggest sale of the year, and you'll get free shipping. These are also the perfect gift, so click my link and get this amazing detail. I will have it in the description box below. It's a risk-free way to get yourself a better sleep, so definitely check out Marlo. We all know how important sleep is. So buy one for yourself, buy one for gifts, buy one for yourself and buy one for gifts. Click the link in my description box below to get up to 40% off. Plus they're offering free shipping. Check it out down there. Do you like the Marlow pillow? Do you prefer a softer or a firmer pillow? Firm? Yeah, me too. Night night. High five, there you go, get down. <laughs> okay, so I've got my water boiling. I'm just gonna salt liberally. And then I'm gonna make, let's see, I probably need three, we'll do 16. Okay, and I'm just gonna boil these for about 10 minutes so that they'll be mostly cooked but still a little bit firm. Okay, so this is the recipe I'm gonna use for Alfredo sauce. It's out of my cookbook, the Essential Pantry Cookbook on page 23. It is definitely not a traditional Alfredo sauce recipe. However, it's really good and it really helps to use a lot of stuff up <laughs> in your fridge and pantry. I've actually got some cream cheese that I've had sitting out for a little bit that I want to um, use up. So I thought this would be perfect to do that with. I've got a really big skillet here um, because I'm going to quadruple the recipe for the Alfredo sauce because I'm gonna make two of the chicken Alfredo lasagnas and then I also wanna have enough Alfredo sauce for us to have for dinner tonight. So I'm just gonna put that butter in there. I've just got it over medium heat and melt it slowly. Okay, and then we're gonna need eight cloves of garlic. So I've got my garlic press. I'm just gonna squeeze it right into the pan. Well, my garlic is melted. I'm gonna go ahead and add my two blocks of cream cheese. And this is obviously the part that is not traditional to Alfredo sauce, but just trust, trust, okay? 
I feel like I've showed you guys so many recipes we have, we hit, we're in the trust tree. So I'm just gonna stir this around until it melts. Okay, so I went ahead and boiled my noodles. I like to spread them out on a cookie sheet um, just so they can dry and cool a little bit. And I just covered them with some wet paper towels until they're cool enough to handle. Okay, so now we're gonna head, add eight cups of milk. And at this point, it's gonna seem like it's not gonna come together, but it will, I promise. Just, just keep whisking and it will all melt and come together into a delicious sauce. I had to go out in the garage fridge and get some more milk. I'm gonna add two teaspoons of salt. And then we're also gonna add uh, a bag of shredded Parmesan. And then I'm gonna add some grated Parmesan as well. Okay, and then for the chicken, I just have a rotisserie chicken here that I got at the store and stuck it in the fridge. So we're gonna go ahead and shred this and then that's what we'll use for the lasagna. Okay, so I just simmered this over medium heat. You do have to keep a close eye on it because it will um, sort of burn to the bottom if you don't watch it. I added a little extra Parmesan, some salt and pepper, gave it a taste and it's delicious. So this is done. This is probably the biggest batch of fake Alfredo sauce <laughs> I have ever made. Um, I shredded my chicken, my noodles are cooked. So now I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna put this together. You may be like, why are you making chicken Alfredo lasagna? And the answer is, is that sometimes I do like to switch it up and I obviously always check with people if they're okay with what I'm cooking before I bring it to them. This particular family that I cook for quite often does, or cannot have cottage cheese or ricotta. Uh, I thought it would be kind of different or you know, it would be a nice, nice change rather um, if I did a chicken broccoli Alfredo. So I texted her and I said, um, could I do a chicken broccoli Alfredo? And she's like, well, we don't really care for broccoli. And so I said, okay, I can leave the broccoli out and just do chicken Alfredo. So that's what we're doing. So I put a layer of the Alfredo sauce in the bottom, and then I added a layer of noodles, and then I'm gonna add, I added just a little bit of the Alfredo sauce. I just wanna make sure it doesn't get dried out. And then I'm gonna add chicken and cheese. This is where I would add um, broccoli if I was adding broccoli to it or you could also add spinach to it as well okay so I'm gonna end off with a layer of noodles and then I'm just gonna scoot this over here so I don't make a mess and then at the end I'm gonna top it with some more alfredo sauce and if obviously this alfredo sauce is a little bit runny and that's totally fine because the noodles are going to absorb it and then we cook it in the oven. And then I'm gonna finish the top with some mozzarella. I'm gonna top it with just a little bit of, so I'm gonna pop some foil on this, put it in a 400 degree oven for probably about 30 to 40 minutes. Okay, so I also put together two little mini pans of the um, lasagna and this is actually going to a single person and the reason I kind of put it in these containers is because they live at the homeless shelter. So um, I already kind of communicated with them, like do they have a microwave, can they heat things up? Um, and so this way it's easier for them to kind of portion out and heat up as they want it. So I'm also going to make up some garlic bread. So I've got two um, little baguette loaves here. These are from the Essential, what is it? No, yeah, Essential Baking Company. Um, so all I'm gonna do is cut these in half and then brush them with some melted butter. And then I've also got just like some garlic herb um, seasoning blend that I'm gonna sprinkle on them. So just really simple. I was really trying to not go to the grocery store <laughs> today. So I was glad to have all this stuff that I could make at home. I'm really gonna focus on cleaning out my pantry and cleaning out my freezer this fall. Okay, so I've got a pan lined with foil. I'm gonna pop these oven probably, pop these in the oven probably for about, I don't know, 10 minutes. So with the remainder of the rotisserie chicken, I'm gonna make some chicken stock out of it and then I don't know what I'm gonna do with it, maybe chicken noodles or something else. So I just put the chicken carcass in my Instant Pot. 
I put some carrots in there, an onion, some garlic, some lemon. If I had celery, I would put it in there. I don't have any celery right now. If I had parsley, I would put that in there, but I don't. So, oh, and then also salt and peppercorns. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the lid. And then I'm just gonna do high pressure for 40 minutes. I don't know, I'm totally guessing. All right, so my lasagna is done. I'm gonna go ahead and cover this up with a double layer of foil. I did bake it covered. I just took the foil off to make sure everything was done. And then I always put a label on it just so people know what it is. So I've got everything prepped. I've got one dinner here. I've got two little pans of the chicken alfredo lasagna, some bread, and a little salad. And then this one over here, we got the bigger pan of lasagna, um, a Caesar salad, and some bread. Okay, so Adam helped me deliver the lasagnas while he chauffeured me, I guess you could say. Um, I also wanted to tell you guys, thank you so much if you have ever signed up to deliver a lasagna on Lasagna Love, because you saw it on my channel. Thank you so much. Um, I actually got an email one time from the founder of Lasagna Love, and she was like, hundreds of people have signed up and said that they heard about it from you so i just wanted to reach out and thank you so anyway i want to thank you guys if you have ever volunteered thank you so much okay so now i'm cooking dinner for us so just a little bit before 5 30. um i need to load the dishwasher also and then um i was able to make an extra like little uh chicken alfredo lasagna from what we have left so i have that in the oven i'm gonna make some garlic bread and a salad, and that's what we're gonna have for dinner. Okay, so after my pasta was done cooking, I drained it and then I tossed it right into the pan with the Alfredo sauce just to let it soak up some of that sauce. And I reserved a, uh, a portion of the noodles for a meal prep, which I'll show you in a little bit what I'm gonna do with that. I also made a salad with some romaine lettuce. I put some olives in there, tomatoes, cucumber, and some Parmesan crisps. And we are gonna have that with the Olive Garden light uh, Italian dressing, which is really good if you've never tried it before. So I'm just gonna give that a toss and then uh, we will have that with our pasta and our garlic bread. I'm gonna go ahead and slice up the garlic bread and it's time to eat. We're just having this little pan of chicken Alfredo lasagna, some plain Alfredo. I sliced up the bread and then I made a salad. So bon appetit. Okay, so I'm getting the kitchen cleaned up from dinner and I set this out on the counter earlier. This is a basically an empty jar of peanut butter except there's a little bit left at the bottom. So I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do with it. There's like this much peanut butter left in it. Hack time. So I'm gonna make this peanut sauce recipe that's in uh, my cookbook. And I saved some of the linguine and rinsed it under cold water so I can make like a cold peanut noodle salad. So I put about a quarter cup of hot water in this jar and then shake it up want some it takes a little bit to get all the peanut butter off the bottom i might actually i might have to add some more peanut butter to that i feel like there wasn't quite <laughs> enough in there to get the consistency that i wanted but that's okay i'm still using up what's left lime juice soy sauce sesame oil I'm gonna need to add some more peanut butter. I don't know, that's a little bit better. Still kind of runny for my liking, but it's fine, it tastes good. Okay, so now at this point you can add whatever you want to this. I'll probably wait until I eat it. Um, you can add carrots, you know, onions, cucumbers, cilantro, whatever. It's one of my favorite like cold noodle salads. You can also use this sauce as a spring roll dip. I'm gonna add it to this container and put it in the fridge. 
and the dressing will um, obviously firm up as it sits in the fridge. All right, so here is all of the chicken stock and the extra chicken that I got from that rotisserie chicken. So each of these is four cups. So I got what, eight, a little over 10 cups. I was sitting here thinking, what am I gonna do with this? Like make chicken noodle soup or whatever. And then I thought, you know what? I actually need chicken stock for a bunch of my recipes for Thanksgiving, or at least a couple of them. So yeah, that'll work for that. Anyway, I'm gonna put this in the fridge. That's it. That's it. Come on, pretzel. That's it. Murphy says like a good boy. Murphy says like a good boy. <laughs> Murphy doesn't like pretzel. Am I done with the bread? Yep. Uh, sit. Can you sit? Can you catch? No, no, no. So you gotta sit. You gotta sit. 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 Good boy. Ooh, almost. If you want cheese, you gotta sit. You gotta sit too. Sit. Oh, good boy. Milo, sit. Let's see if you can catch this one. Good boy. Oh, good boy. Good morning and happy Sunday. So, I made a quick breakfast this morning of hash browns and then I also made English muffins with ham, egg, and cheese. Now I am out at Starbucks, of course, getting my iced coffee for the day. They do know my name. Should I be concerned about that? Anyway, so what I'm doing this morning is getting my regular groceries for the week along with my Thanksgiving groceries. So I'm a little concerned with how long this is gonna take me, but I'm gonna try to be expedient. Although, I really enjoy grocery shopping, so I know, I'm weird. I'm weird. Also, funny story, we literally never do like scratch off tickets or lottery or anything like that. Adam bought um, a charity basket at work where like, you know, people donate things and then they put them in this big basket and then like the proceeds go to charity. So he bought this charity basket, it had a ton of scratch off tickets in it and it had a, I think like a nice bottle of whiskey or something like that. Guess how much he won? He scratched them all off yesterday. $90, $90 off of scratch off tickets. I'm like, that's crazy. So anyway, um, when I go to Hy-Vee after I go to Aldi, I'll just cash those in at customer service. I have to mail some things. I did make a list yesterday uh, of what I want to accomplish. I always feel like sometimes on the weekend, like Saturday, I'm not very productive because I feel like that's the day where I'm like, recuperating from the week trying to relax you know and then Sunday is the day where I like get my ass in gear and be productive okay so I want to go to my PO box hopefully I'll have time to do that I want to organize my earrings I have a bunch of clothes that need to be categorized and donated I want to get my kitchen cleaned oh actually I can check off my Thanksgiving planning and my Thanksgiving shopping because I'm doing that right now um, deliver food I did that last night um, Connor needs a haircut and new boots, which I'll take him to do this afternoon. And then I want to plan out the rest of my videos for November, so I'll do that this afternoon as well. So I think, um, you know what else I'm going to put on there? I'm going to put out fall decor. So here's the situation is normally I really like to decorate for Halloween, but I just did not have a chance to do it this weekend. Like with the amount that I've been traveling for work, like pretty much every other week, I just never had a chance to get everything out and then we were still in soccer season which meant that like our weekends were consumed with soccer and so it kind of irritates me like <laughs> the only thing I really did was put out my Hall Halloween wreath um and so now it's like okay Thanksgiving is this week do I decorate for fall for like one week and then switch it over to Christmas I think that's kind of what I'm leaning towards because I'm having people over to my house for Thanksgiving. If I wasn't, I feel like I would just decorate for Christmas right now, but for some reason it feels odd to me if I have people over to my house for Thanksgiving and, and all the Christmas stuff is up. You know, do you know what I'm, like I'm the type of person who, I don't wanna put my Christmas tree up until the day after Thanksgiving. The day after Thanksgiving, fine, let's do it, let's go all out. But like, I, like on YouTube you see all these people decorating for 
Christmas like early like early October and I'm like I mean you know you do you yeah everyone could do what they want um, with their own house I just feel like I'm I don't really want to get into that like Christmas decor spirit until like after Thanksgiving so yeah I'll probably do that and then I'll probably just make a, a vlogmas uh, video I did ask on Instagram uh, what you guys want to see for vlogmas so you've got you've given me some good ideas I'll, most of the things that people have suggested I was planning on doing anyway but some a lot of people made some interesting suggestions which um, someone requested like a men's gift guide which I think is a good idea and actually I have a list of things that Adam gave me like several years ago that I never made a video out of so I'm like oh I could do that and then someone said something interesting um, tell us all the things that you bought in 2022 that were not worth it and I was like that is fast that's a fascinating idea so maybe you, maybe I could do like like half the video like things I bought that I really liked and things I bought that I hated like I think that would be like a fun juxtaposition I look very pale I am pale I mean I, I'm don't don't get me wrong I'm I'm pale but I feel like I look paler than than usual in this camera right here okay let's go are we ready let's get pumped up let's do it I was really honestly able to cross off most of the things um, obviously there are some like spices and things like that that you can't get at Aldi or the containers are too large and I want the smaller containers um, and there's certain things that I prefer to get name brand that they don't have there so I'm at Hy-Vee um, they have their what do you call it holiday tumblers and stuff out right now I always look for like the plastic water bottles especially for like Kira so she could take water to school. I don't like sending the glass ones because I feel like they're going to break, but I think this travel mug is super pretty too. I always get an ornament every year and which one did I get? I got this, I actually got this one, but in gold. Okay, so I'm done at uh, Aldi, done at hy Um Who wants to cook after they do two hours of grocery shopping not me so we got subway all right so let's do a little grocery haul show you what I got for this week from Hy-Vee and from Aldi so I decided after I bought a package of romaine lettuce last week and consistently ate some salads I thought you know what I'm gonna buy chopped up lettuce this week it's fine I don't have time to be washing my lettuce this weekend. So I got two bags of the sweet butter lettuce. Um, I wanted to get romaine, but they didn't have it. One bag of shredded lettuce. I might do a burrito bowl situation type thing with this. And then I got these mixed greens. This has spinach in it. I got this because I have some goat cheese in the fridge, and I thought this would make a really great salad with that. And some chicken and some almonds and maybe some berries. Um, I got some green onions just because I always like to have those on hand in the refrigerator. Some cucumbers. I got two of these little fruit and cheese with cracker packs. Um, the kids really like these. They have apples, grapes, cheese, and Ritz crackers. Um, I got some avocados, minis. Um, Connor has been liking to have avocado toast for a snack, either after school or at bedtime. It's actually cute. Last night he made it all <laughs> himself. I mean, I coached him through it, but um, I thought it was cute. So anyway, I got a bag of avocados for that. He also really likes these pickles. And um, I like getting them at Aldi because they are cheaper and they're really convenient to pack in his lunch. So I got a box of those. I got a bag of green beans for dinner tonight. Two packages of the rainbow pack berries just because they looked the best. There's blackberries, raspberries, and blueberries in there. Some mango slices, and then I also got some bananas. Um, I grabbed this at Hy-Vee. This is the Gilbert's Caprese Chicken Sausage. Um, I thought I would try this fried up with some of these potatoes for breakfast, maybe with an egg. Um, I don't know if I've had this kind before. If I have, it's been quite a long time. I also got some eggs. Um, just one yogurt. I have still have some in the fridge from last week. This is the uh, vanilla 
mixed berry Chobani yogurt. And then I got some water flavoring, um, a two pack of cream cheese. Hopefully today I'm gonna make a pumpkin roll cake, so one of these will be for that. I got some of my favorite Oasis hummus from Hy-Vee. And then Hy-Vee had the Good Culture cottage cheese, which I've never seen there before in the larger packages, so it must be new. Um, I got this because it was actually like highly recommended as a really great cottage cheese. I personally prefer the old fashioned cottage cheese from AE, but I wanted to try this also. This is 2%, this is 4%. Uh, we'll eat it at some point. I don't know. I love cottage cheese. I probably have a serving a day um, at some point because I love it so much. And then I got some rotisserie pulled pork. That's going to be for dinner tonight. Some cheese for sandwiches. Two packs of cheese sticks. A package of hot dogs. And then I got some of our favorite turkey sausage sticks. I saw these at Hy-Vee. I've never actually seen them before. These little mini mozzarella and pepperoni snackers so I thought the kids would like those and then these are from Aldi they are the turkey and cheese um, generic lunchables okay so I have I don't think I've ever purchased protein granola before but I thought this would be really good to have with um, yogurt and I'm trying to get more protein in so I decided to get some of this it's just the oats and honey I think this is kind of like a dupe for the Nature Valley one um, I got some Fairlife milk at Hy-Vee for this week. And then this is the kind of hot sauce or taco sauce that we like from Tasty Tacos. This is so expensive. It's $6.99 at Hy-Vee, which is ridiculous, but it's delicious. So I get it and it lasts a while. I got two boxes of au gratin potatoes for dinner tonight, a raspberry vinaigrette to go with that salad I was talking about with the goat cheese, and then some barbecue sauce for dinner tonight as well. Hy-Vee had mac and cheese on sale. You could get one box for 69 cents, so I got that. I also needed some more Lowry seasoned salt. Um, I like to keep this on hand because I actually find that some recipes I use call for it. And then it also does a really good job seasoning fried potatoes as well. So I wish I could have gotten a smaller bottle, but whatever. I got some apple juice boxes for the kids' lunches, some chocolate and vanilla pudding, Grated Parmesan cheese, we're almost out of that. Some Nutella. I got some of these sausage patties to make breakfast sandwiches with. These are pretty good if you've never tried them before and they're really convenient for breakfast sandwiches. Um, I got two bags of the Tyson chicken tenders. So I don't think I've ever tried this flavor before. This is black pepper herb. Um, I've tried the blackened ones before and I've had the buffalo ones before, which are really good. But I really like these for quick lunches for me during the week because they're super easy to heat up in the air fryer. Um, I got some buns for the pulled pork sandwiches tonight. And then I did get myself the cheese advent calendar from Aldi. If you want to know what the little cheeses look like each day that's what they look like okay i got some velveeta because well because not without a cause michael um i got it because it was on sale and i don't have any right now and i figure i will probably use it uh i don't think i need it for thanksgiving but i might use it for christmas so got that got some hot dog buns to go with the hot dogs some pork rinds uh have you ever had these before they are pineapple and ancho chili they're really good if you've never had them. Highly, highly recommend them. And I don't even really like pork rinds that much, but I think they're good. I got these to put away for Christmas baking. The pretzel rings, I like to um, put Rolos in the middle of these and melt them and put a pecan on top for Christmas baking. They're really good. I got some of the honey battered breast tenders. Connor really likes those. Some fries, some uh, crackers, because we were running low on those for soup. Uh, I got these at Hy-Vee, the Honey Barbecue Lay's Poppables, some uh, bread. This is all Thanksgiving stuff back here, by the way. <laughs> and then uh, I saw that they had these at Timberwick, uh, which is like the Woodwick, you know, candles at Aldi. And I really like these. The cinnamon just like smells like holiday to me. So I got that. And then I saw someone on my Facebook have this and I was like, oh my gosh, I need this. Okay. So... It is like the little village houses, but it's a little Aldi. How freaking cute is that? I know, right? I had to have it. I had to. All right, so I'm going to get this stuff put away, and then I'm going to take Connor to get his haircut. Okay, we just got back from 
getting Connor's haircut. We also went to the store, got him a new winter coat, some boots, and now I'm working on cooking dinner and I have to do all of these dishes. I'm gonna fit what I can in the dishwasher and then hand wash the rest of them. So loading my dishwasher is as close as I get as an adult to playing Tetris, but I really pride myself in making sure that I use uh, as most of the space as I can because doing dishes is like one of my least favorite chores in the kitchen. You can let me know if you like doing dishes. I know some people do. Um, and here's a quick look at what we had for dinner this evening. I made green beans and some scallop potatoes. Uh, the green beans had bacon on them. They were delicious. And then I also made some pulled pork sandwiches and that is what we had to eat. So this is my bin of holiday plates and napkins that I keep here in the kitchen and I was just getting it out to see if I had anything from last year and lo and behold <laughs> I do have some plates left some Thanksgiving plates so that's fine and then I do have a few napkins these are the ones that I got from Aldi today so we'll have extra that's fine so I have to tell you guys, make sure that you are subscribed to my channel if you're not already. I do know that about 40% of people that watch my channel are not subscribed. So click that subscribe button because you know what? My favorite video of the year is coming up and that is my annual Thanksgiving video where I do a plan shop cook Thanksgiving dinner with me. I am hoping to post that either the Friday or Saturday after Thanksgiving. And then guess what comes next? Vlogmas. Yes, I've had a couple people ask me if I'm doing Vlogmas this year. And yes, I am. And then of course, I always get questions about how can you do Vlogmas <laughs> when you have a full-time job? Uh, well, the answer is, is that I often take a lot of time off around Christmas in December. So that is super helpful. Also, the travel is uh, sometimes much lighter in December than it is in other months. So it is, it is helpful with that as well. But yes, I am planning on doing Vlogmas this year. I'm very excited about it. So right now I'm just scrubbing out my sink. Um, I'm using this Molly's, um, scrub. I don't know. I think it's like baking soda and essential oils. I believe I got it from Thrive Market in one of my orders. Um, I like to use it sometimes. I feel like it's like a more natural cleaner, which I'm not necessarily concerned about, um, but I like to alternate between that and Barkeeper's Friend for my sink. To clean out my garbage disposal, I really, really like the CLR uh, dish or yeah, the CLR garbage disposal, I can think of the word, um, cleaner pods. They are super hard to find. I should probably look and see if I can order them online somewhere because I only have one store where I can order them in town and it's like at Menards, which is like a home improvement store, sort of like a Lowe's. Let me know if you guys have a Menards in your area. I think it's like a Midwest store, but everyone jokes about it because you can literally go in there and buy everything. You can buy like lumber, coats, rugs, toilet paper, groceries, cleaning supplies. They like literally have everything in there. So I'm going to go ahead and clean off my stove because tonight I'm going to make a pumpkin roll cake. So let's get this fall candle lit and get some fall baking started. I wanted to show you guys how to make one of the uh, Libby's recipe pumpkin roll cake. It's been a while since I've made one. So here's what you need. You need flour and powdered sugar, also some vanilla, some pureed pumpkin, three eggs, some salt, cinnamon, ground cloves, baking powder, baking soda, some cream cheese, butter, and some regular sugar. I'm using the one third less fat cream cheese. And then I just have a 15 by 10 jelly roll pan here. I'm greasing that with some Baker's Joy spray. And then you do want to line this pan with wax paper. This is literally the only time you want to put wax paper in the oven. Normally you don't want to do that, but for this particular recipe, it does work. It's really only in the oven for like 12 or 13 minutes. So I prepared my pan and then I'm going to go ahead and make the pumpkin cake batter. So I added some eggs to a bowl and I'm going to add some sugar to that as well. Um, I used a combination of regular sugar and Lakanto monk fruit sweetener in this recipe um, just because I wanted to cut down on the calories a little bit. I'm also adding my canned pumpkin. This recipe doesn't quite call for one um, 
can of pumpkin. So I just fed the leftover to my dogs. I added the leavening agents along with the spices and the salt, and then I'm gonna add three quarters of a cup of flour and give that a mix. Once the batter is all mixed together, you wanna go ahead and pour it into your prepared pan. I also forgot to mention that I greased the top of the wax paper as well. And then just go ahead and spread that out with a spatula. The layer is gonna seem quite thin, but it will bake and puff up a little bit. So just make sure that you try to spread it to the edges as evenly as you can. And then when that comes out of the oven, uh, go ahead and prepare your tea towel. So I have a tea towel that I'm gonna dust with powdered sugar. I'm gonna flip my cake out onto the towel. And then you wanna carefully peel off the waxed paper, just being careful not to tear anything. You can see how easily that it comes off as long as you grease it very well. And then what you wanna do is while the cake is still warm, roll it up in the tea towel that's covered with that powdered sugar. And the rationale behind this is that you're rolling the cake while it's still warm and flexible, and then you're gonna put it on a cooling rack while um, it's still warm so that it can cool. And then when it's completely cool, we'll unroll it and add the frosting. So for the frosting, I'm adding some butter, some one third less fat cream cheese, and then I'm using a combination of regular powdered sugar and the monk fruit powdered sugar. I'm going to add some vanilla and then I'll just go ahead and beat that up with my stand mixer. Uh, make sure that your butter and your cream cheese is definitely at room temperature. That will make your job a lot easier when you're combining <laughs> the frosting. Um, and I personally really can't tell the difference when I make cream cheese frosting with the lower fat cream cheese. I think it tastes just fine. So as you can see, my cake ripped a little bit, but it's totally fine. You know, don't worry if things aren't perfect they're probably still gonna taste good and that's all that matters. So I went ahead and dumped my frosting out onto the cooled cake and then I'm just gonna use an offset spatula to spread that out and you do wanna make sure that you spread it all the way to the edges. Since we're gonna roll this cake back up and put it in the refrigerator and it will have time to set, it's really not that big of a deal if it rips in a couple of places, especially towards the inside of the roll because the idea is that we'll, that will get rolled up and then you won't be able to kind of see those um, rips in it. But I'm gonna go ahead and just spread this out in as even of a layer as I can. And then once you have it all spread out, you just want to roll it up the same way that it was rolled up before. And mine stuck a little bit to the towel. I feel like the last time I made this, it did not stick to the towel. So I'm wondering if I maybe just didn't wait until it was quite cool enough, but I still, I still made it work. You know, whatever. We're the, we're the queen of making it work <laughs> around here. So as you can see, yes, some of my cake is sticking to the towel. That's fine. I rolled it up as best I could. And then I put out a layer of um, plastic wrap, and then I'm going to go ahead and roll the cake onto that and just roll that tightly up in a couple sheets of plastic wrap. And then this will go in the fridge for at least a couple hours. Here's what it looks like when it comes out. You can see that it's still very pretty, even though you can see where it was ripped <laughs> there on the side. Go ahead and dust it with some additional powdered sugar. And then once you cut it, you see that you have this like pretty sort of like Swiss roll cake type looking design. It's so pretty and so impressive. And the best part is it tastes really good. So I'll link this recipe down below and I hope you guys try it. It's really delicious. Okay. So now I'm going to move upstairs. I'm going to take a shower, but before I do that, I need to unpack my suitcase because I was out of town for work the week prior and I always procrastinate in unpacking my suitcase and I wanted to get some laundry done. So I'm just taking out all of my clothes. Uh, most of them are dirty, but there were some that I didn't wear. So when I pack my suitcase to come back home, I do keep the dirty and clean clothes separate so that I don't end up having to wash everything, but most everything ends up being dirty. And then I always just keep my shoes that I wear for work and most of my toiletries um, in bags in my suitcase. And so that way, when I go to pack again, I don't have to worry about it. It's already in there. So I just got out of the shower and I have a bunch of clothes that I need to sort out um, that are going to Goodwill, but I always like to itemize them before I donate them. Because if you, I don't know, this is like a taxes thing, but if you donate a certain amount to Goodwill, um, if you want to claim it 
on your taxes at the end of the year, you have to itemize it. So I just write it down on paper and then my accountant gives me like a spreadsheet where I can itemize everything and then get a dollar amount. But let me show you this. <laughs> and look, it's, <laughs> well, here's a distraction. This is our old Super Nintendo. I can't, okay, I was gonna say, is this, was this mine or Adam's? I think this was Adam's old Super Nintendo. Yes, we still have it. <laughs> Um, and no, that's not going to good. Well, we're keeping that. But this whole big thing of clothes, which are mostly Kira's, I think, because I had her go through hers not too long ago and kind of clean everything out because she got some new clothes. And then I've got some boxes over here to put the clothes in and then I'll take them downstairs and put them in my trunk. Okay, so I don't have any video of it, but I was able to get everything done in terms of boxing all those clothes up and putting them in the trunk of my car, hallelujah. So I was happy with what I got done this weekend, but I wanted to show you guys that I did get up early on Monday morning and do a spin on my Soul Cycle bike. I took my early bird cocktail and ate a healthy breakfast. I am posting uh, some weight loss content over on Instagram. And if you wanna follow my journey over there, I will leave my link to Instagram down below. I'm going to post what I eat in a day is to lose 75 pounds. So make sure that you follow me over there. It's just Jen Chapin on Instagram. And also don't forget to check out Marlo. That is seriously the best pillow I've ever had. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.